Hey folks, um, we're live here tonight and hopefully the video quality is improved. We've installed some new lighting out here in the studio. Uh, thanks a bunch, uh, Bill, for helping me come over here and uh, install some new LEDs up here on the studio ceiling. So hopefully, and I can see from what I'm seeing here, it's vastly improved from what it was the uh, last time we were out here live. All right, guys. So, um, yeah, hey, man, I, I, I really even can't believe that so many people have jumped in here. Got two of my members already in. I'm going to give the shout outs first. Uh, Cooper, Cooper the Great is first in the first in the uh, chat over there tonight. Uh, John Daigle and Becky Dupree, both members. And, you know, they've been members for a while now. So they're a little, they have a special little uh, emoji showing up beside their name. Also, their name is in green. So if you have not checked out our join button yet on our channel, check it out. out. It is um, a really cheap. And you're going to get a lot of special perks over there. You're going to get access to that community tab where we're going to put up a bunch of special stuff for you guys and some inside stuff. And I see uh, Mrs. Backwoods is already in the chat. She's a moderator. So uh, keep it polite. Uh, keep it, uh, you know, keep it, uh, you know, PG-13 or she'll kick your ass out here real quick. Okay. And uh, so we got also got Wes Walker from Corpus Christi, Texas, in the house. Appreciate you being in here, buddy. And I, I really, at this point, I really can't even believe that so many people just show up on a, a spur of moment here on a Sunday night. And um, so, and there's Darla A, another one of our members just showed up. I appreciate you, uh, the members. And she is also a moderator. and. Uh, keep polite or to kick your ass out too. So, all right, we got uh, LT just made it. All right, we got uh, we got West Walker B Fowler, Bob Fowler. Uh, appreciate it. Hello, he says. Um, hello, back with family. Really wish I could join. And okay, so he brings up a very valid point. Um, if you're on the iOS platform, uh, I don't even know why YouTube launched the join feature if it wasn't available to all platforms. But it, if you're on iOS, Android, and Android tablets, don't work. Okay. So, hey, buddy. Uh, all right. So we covered that. Let's give another couple shout outs here. We got George Rivera, George from Claremont, Florida. Hey, buddy, right up the road from us. We just got back from Southwest Florida, so it's been a struggle getting on here tonight. I try to get on at 8 o'clock. I was trying to render out uh, like a 40-minute video that we just shot from down in Southwest Florida. So uh, my computer was taking longer than I really thought it was going to take. And... Uh, the minute it got done, jumped out here, got all live, and appreciate you, um, Alan Klein. Good info, thanks. Uh, and uh, my good old buddy, uh, Chef Johnny, Texas style cuisine and barbecue. Have a great lot. Have a great live. I'm at the World Championship Ranch Rodeo in Amarillo. Just wanted to say hi. Okay, so he won't be probably moderator tonight because he's at the rodeo. But we appreciate Chef Johnny. And if you have not checked out Texas style Q and Cuisine out and hit the sub button, and maybe um, one of my other mods can put a link into his channel so you guys can click there. You can click if they do, you can click on that link and go to over there and sub, sub Chef Johnny's channel, Texas style barbecue to scene without leaving this live chat. Okay. So, um, all right. So Chipper's Family Adventures, uh, appreciate you joining us. North Florida Outdoorsman, hello from Palacca, Florida. 
my old stomping grounds, I've spent a lot of time fishing on the St. John's River uh, between Green Coast Springs and Placa. So uh, in my earlier days, and, you know, we still go back up there and do a lot of shrimping. Okay, if you see some, go back on our channel, see some of our shrimp videos. That's where most of them come from. All right, and uh, Becky Dupree, I guess she, I, um, she also follows us on Facebook. So if you're not following us on Facebook, uh, maybe Mrs. Backwoods can throw in our Facebook group link uh, right down here in the chat. Go over there on there because you're going to see a lot of the back, you know, the the stuff that's behind the scenes. Okay. And that's going to be on there on Facebook. And, um, and so that's what Becky Dupree is. Um, uh, talking about over there in the chat is uh, how we roped a wild seahorse in our a uh, couple days ago down southwest Florida. All right, so let's move on here. And tonight's subject is you know, like I got a lot of people still checking in, and we'll give it a little bit. Twist an ankle, hey buddy. Um, yeah, hey buddy, hey buddy, back uh, to twist an ankle. Uh, I uh, competed with them in an amateur barbecue competition a couple, couple years ago, and um, it was awesome. They've been having hanging on my uh, on my desk for a whole bunch of months now, months and months and months. And I actually did a video on this later, or, or <laughs> later. I did a video on it earlier. Nobody out, uh, nobody really watched it. So, but. I thought tonight that I would go over um, this again and let you guys um, chime in on what you think about it. And and what I've done done was I've spent a lot of time going over and thinking about it and tying um, tips for doing what we do here, which is outdoor camping outdoor cast iron grilling barbecue all that what my top 10 tips to give people that are just starting out or even people that are just you know getting started or even some of you guys that are experts like twisted ankle over there um my tips for you know outdoor cooking so we're going to start out uh, we're going to give uh, a couple shout outs here before we get really started. Um, we got Cast Iron Barbecue. Uh, he's just saying hi in there in the chat. All right. So we're going to do like, uh, just like um, they used to do on the late Dave Letterman and all they used to do in the late night talk shows. We're going to start number 10. Okay. Uh, and number 10 on my list always is don't. Be afraid to fail at it. All right, you're going to. You, I failed. I got a couple fails right there on the channel, right for everybody to see. Okay, right for everybody to see. All right, first time we ever tried to bake a chicken in a Dutch oven, it looked great. Totally dried out. Uh, it was a mess. All right, so you got. And it's been a very popular video on our channel, actually. Um, so don't be afraid to screw it up. All right. I, you know, it's still food. As long as you don't burn it to a damn gun crisp, you can always do something with it. Okay. So don't be afraid to fail and don't be afraid to try something new. If, if we didn't ever try something new on this channel, it probably nobody ever watched it. Okay. Uh, okay. So that was number 10. Number nine coming in, coming in, twisted ankle. Uh, thanks for showing. And he says, it ain't no pro, but you can cook it in the house. You can cook it in the outdoors in the Dutch oven. Have fun and don't be scared to try. Absolutely. I, I 100% agree with you. Um, so, you know, it's a little different cooking outside than it is cooking in the house. And you're going to have to adapt a little bit of your technique, cook time, so on and so forth. 
Um, but that's kind of what we try to do here. We try to take like recipes that might be cooked in the house and try to adapt them to cooking outside so that you can do them anywhere you're at. You know, right? So, um, appreciate it. Uh, twist away, twisted ankle. I'm sorry, twisted ankle. That's kind of a tongue twist. There. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we got how about your barbecue in the house. Thanks for all the videos. Learn a lot, Frank. Appreciate you showing up there. And we got Becky Dupree uh, showing up. Uh, I probably missed your uh, first one. Uh, the Cook It All series showed a few problems, but that's more to do with the design of the Cook It All rather than the cook. I agree with you on that, um, Becky. Um, I don't know who designed the um, the Lodge Cook It All. Uh I've heard from a lot of people on the on that video series in the comments that say, you know, it works way, way better on a campfire with that stand that they show it. You're like a big old stand. You've got to get a lot of fire under that thing to really make it work. It didn't really work with any the um, traditional uh, either campfire or, you know, small campfire or, or Dutch oven style cooking that we try to do with it. But... It may work for a few people. Um, I just didn't think it was worth the hundred fifty-eight dollars to uh, invest into it. And um, you know, even after we produced that whole series and said, "Don't buy the lots, cook it all," uh, <coughs> some <coughs> excuse me, somehow uh, Lodge still decided to uh, take us on as a brand ambassador for some reason. So, uh, hey, um, let's answer a few more questions before we get on to number nine. This is going to take a while, I, I can see. Uh, Kevin Stoker says, uh, hey, how many cast iron pieces do you own right now? I think it's about 57. 57 and growing by the day because always uh, people are sending us new ones or we're picking up new ones or we're finding them in – a yard sale, estate sale, whatever. We got 57. We probably have right now, I would say, about 30, 30 pieces that are um, should be considered antiques. Uh, so the, we probably have 30 that are more than 50 years old, and those are some of my favorites. We do have some brand new ones that are becoming my favorites. So go back and uh, watch our our series on the black locks and the fuel company cast iron. Those are some of the ones we got coming up real uh, pretty prominently. And uh, we're going to do another black lock uh, skillet challenge very soon. Uh, probably coming up in the next couple weeks. Uh, we just got back off from vacation. We've been in Southwest Florida down in Fort Myers beach. And we did a bunch of fun stuff down there. Did a, a big eco tour through the Everglades, filmed a bunch of that, did a lot of fishing and um, we did some crabbing and just hanging out with friends uh, right on the water down there. Like I said, just, that's the reason I'm a little late getting on here tonight. I was trying to get that video saved on the computer here. Um, we we'll be editing that out and uh, putting it up in blurbs. Um, so Let's get to number nine before we talk about any more of that. Uh, number nine on my list, okay, and I worked on this this list probably a month, okay. Um, number nine, uh, when you're going to do outdoor cooking or any kind of cooking yourself, actually, I think a, a very important tip is to cook what your family likes and season it the way they likes they they like it. Um, if you watched our channel any amount of time, you know, there's some things that Mrs. Backwoods doesn't like that I do like. I like salt. She doesn't like salt. I like bell peppers of any color. She doesn't like them. So a lot of times I'll tell you, here's where you would put the bell peppers in if you like them. Or here's where you put mushrooms in if you like them. And it's, it's crazy because some people will like dislike the video just because they don't like uh, an ingredient in the video. 
that's crazy to me. Um, okay, if you don't like that, and I, I already always tell you people, uh, or everybody that watch, if you don't like the ingredient we put in it, just don't put it in there. I, it's it's that simple. Um, change it up, put something else. If you don't like a particular ingredient, leave it out. Just don't hit the thumbs down button. Only hit thumbs down because you don't hate mushrooms or you hate bell peppers. Okay, that's silly. If you totally think the video sucks, then go ahead and sit hit the thumbs down button. But if if you just don't like the recipe, don't hit the thumbs down button. Okay. All right, so hey, uh, let's see. We got a couple shout outs here, and somebody's tagging me in the chat over here. And I want to remind people how to do that. If you want to tag me so that your chat shows up prominently over on the right hand side of my screen, then you want to hit at backwards score, or you just uh, start, start typing backwards gourmet. And it will show up there. Then you can click on it and then you can write your your message and it will come up in red over on the side over there so I can see it more prominently. And that was uh, the person who knows how to do that right now is Peter. And he says uh, in all caps and we appreciate all caps because see, I'm wearing my glasses here. So he says Tampa loves the backwards gourmet channel so we appreciate you guys skeeter over there in tampa and we try to get over there as much as we can and uh fish that tampa bay and uh in that area uh and i really wish i lived a lot closer to it i'm, I'm only about an hour away so um Appreciate it there, Skeeter. All right, let's give a couple more shout outs. We got a couple more people coming into the chat. And let me remind you if while I'm yakking away, if you're asking a question and I missed it, and sometimes I'm talking and I run on and I'm not looking at the chat. So if you have a question and I don't respond to it, go ahead and put it in again because sometimes it goes by pretty fast over there. As I'm looking at it. All right. And uh, we got Shane Green. And uh, no, it's, I'm sorry, Steve Green. He's he's chiming in saying, uh, yeah, haha, spice it up. Yep. We like the spice. I love the spice. We got Steve Steve showing up in the chat here. Big shout out. Hello from Indianapolis, Indiana. We appreciate it. Uh, Steve Green, he's uh, from Hello from West. I, I, uh, I guess it's WY. I don't particularly know if that's West Virginia or where it's at. Chipper Family Adventures, we appreciate you guys. We and uh, he's saying we did your mountain man breakfast and loved it, but took out the peppers. Yeah, uh, I I done a couple different different versions of that. And uh, I had to take the peppers out for Mrs. Backwoods. So, yep, uh, take out whatever you're, you know, if you're doing it for your, your wife and your kids and they don't like it, especially the kids sometimes don't like it, just uh, take them out and uh, everybody's going to love it. Uh, uh, Rob Slagle, he's uh, in the chat from the great state of Alabama. Hopefully we'll be getting up there this month or uh, soon, uh, my brother has a bunch of land up there, and uh, one of my new friends from our sporting clays clubs also has a bunch of land up there to hunt on. So maybe we'll get up there and do a little hunting. Uh, if if you guys have watched my channel for any time, you know I suck at deer hunting. I really suck. I just don't have the patience for it, but. We'll try to get up there and experience this anyway. And maybe somebody will get one and I can cook it up for them. All right. So I'll be fine with that too. So I, some of your uh, questions are going by pretty fast. So like I said, if you don't hear me respond, go ahead and put them in again. Sir Stan Urban, anybody know a source of campfire waffle iron? I saw one in a video several years ago with a hinge top with a lock clip had 
a two foot handle. Okay, Stan, we appreciate you here. Long time subscriber. So if anybody, I have not had any knowledge of that. So uh, if anybody in the chat can answer Stan, um, give him a shout out over there. Remember to just start typing Stan Irvin. You can tag him back the same way you can tag me. So if you want to respond to someone else's chat, just start typing their um, their name in the chat. Uh, same way it, that it's displayed and it will pop up. You can also subscribe to their channel if they have a channel. Okay, uh, Twisted Ankles got a, uh, another question. Have you thought about putting on a class? Um, yes, uh, guys, I thought about putting on a class. I really don't know how much interest it uh, would have here in Florida. It would probably have a lot more interest in, you know, like California, Texas. But uh, it's something we're thinking about doing uh, YouTube on YouTube. Um, but pretty much if you watch our, class, our channel, that's pretty much our class. Okay. Dewey Campbell, appreciate you showing up there. He's uh, love the videos from Central Kentucky. Appreciate you guys, and we appreciate everyone who watches our channel on a regular basis, and especially you guys that show up here on live chat tonight. So we're going to. I uh, see some of you guys are um, answering other pe people. We only got the number nine on the list, so. We're going to go to number eight on my list. And my, number eight on my list is watch the Backwoods Gourmet channel and every other channel on YouTube as a guide. Okay. If, like we mentioned earlier, uh, if you don't like a particular ingredient they're using, uh, just change it up, do something else, or leave it out completely. So I, I, when I go and research particular dishes and uh, different techniques on YouTube for cooking, and I'm doing a little, you know, trying to trying to learn something new, I don't, I never do their their recipe, you know, verbatim or write it down or any of that kind of. I just look, use it as a as a as a guide, a general idea of how to get to the finished product. So uh, that's not only a tip from me, but a tip from, from me to you watching other channels on YouTube. So let's skip on down to, or not skip on down, let's go on down while everybody's saying hi. Uh, we got uh, TK Diver One uh, checking in on the chat there. Appreciate you showing up. So, and we got uh, Galen Long, hey, big backwoods, watching from Oklahoma. Thank you for showing up there, Oklahoma. Man, beautiful, beautiful area of the country. All right, so we're going to go down to a very important one. That's going to be number seven on the list is learn how to control your heat. Uh, whether you're, camp, you're using it on campfire, whether you're using it on uh, charcoal, uh, we're using a propane burner or heck if you're using your cast iron in the house on a on a gas or electric burner. Need to learn how to use that heat control to uh, work with whatever you're cooking. Where um, all your ingredients are going to get done. And, you know, what's great about using charcoal campfire and all that it's going to start out hot but it's going to slowly peter off you know it's going to slowly die out but if you're trying to do it on a propane burner or you're going to use it on your propane stove or electric in the house that's going to stay steady the whole time and what's going to happen if you're using <clears throat> any of those normal fuel so fuel sources it's going to stay steady the whole time, and you, and that pan is going to keep getting hotter and hotter 
as you keep going because the, you know, as that, whatever you're cooking warms up, the pan temperature is going to get higher and higher. So that's where you're going to have uh, a problem with it getting maybe too hot. Whereas campfire charcoal, the charcoal is kind of going to die as your, 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 whatever you got cooking in the pan, as it gets hotter, that that's going to die away. So it's actually kind of easier keeping burning stuff up on campfire charcoal or real wood coals. All right. So let's go back over here and give another couple of people a shout out. <clears throat> we got uh, John Fenson coming in from uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And he says, happy Veterans Day. Appreciate it. Um, as some of you may know, I am a veteran of the United States Marine Corps, happily served during the Cold War. Um, we got Becky Dupree, and she's uh, giving, a sh giving a shout to um, Stan Irvin. And then we got, um, all right, Steve Green. So we got a couple people just talking to each other here. And uh, so we're going to keep going down the list here. And uh, number six is on my list is never, ever use petroleum products to start your fires or your charcoal. So <clears throat> if you're still using that charcoal lighter fluid, you know, you need to go ahead and get you. I got it handy right here. Go ahead and get you a chimney starter. This is a Weber. Costs 14 bucks. Uh, they make a mini one. I got a collapsible one. I got a real cheap one. Uh, this costs about the same as about uh, two bottles of that starter fluid. Use a couple of paper towels up under here. Even some uh, parts of your charcoal bag will get your chimney started. And, um, That'll be ready even faster than if you start it with lighter fluid. All right. So uh, Skeeter's chiming in here. He's also a vet. Appreciate your service, sir. Uh, Skeeter says, uh, U.S. Air Force, 1979 to 84. Um, I served from 82 to 86, United States Marine Corps. Uh, Second Marine Air Wing, uh, Harrier Squadron, avionics technician. Proud to serve. And... Um, I just actually uh, came back from Southwest Florida um, with a week of vacation with one of my best friends in the whole wide world, which was uh, one of my my roommate when I was in the Corps in those days. And uh, I appreciate him and made lifelong, plan lifelong friends in the military. All right, we've got somebody new in the chat. There's uh, Doug Johnson. Says thank you for your service from New Jersey. We appreciate that, and thank you for you guys that did not have a chance to serve to support us that did. Uh, Galen Long in the chat there also giving out a shout out for uh, thank you for your service. We got uh, Moana Thompson. Hello, Mr. Backwoods from Chimneys Rock. Or, or she's saying, no, she's not saying chimney rock. She's saying chimneys rock. Okay. Use the chimneys. Okay. All right. Let's move on here. Let's move on down to number uh, number five, which was kind of the same thing, which was use the chimney starter, start the charcoal. Okay. All right. We're going to come on down now to number four. Uh, this is a big one for me because, you know, you see all the cast iron hanging on the wall behind me and in these bags, we got Dutch ovens over here. Um, if you're going to do outdoor cooking, campfire cooking, and I've taught this to several people that have, uh, used it on their channel and have been very successful, uh, doing way stepping up their, their, uh, campfire cooking game. And, uh, one of them would be Overland, Florida. I did a couple trips with uh, last year and hope to do a couple more trips with this year. 
and it's learn how to use and season cast iron. Um, cast iron's bulletproof. It's <laughs> at home on the fire, uh, charcoal, uh, coals off the campfire, right in the campfire. You can't hurt it. Um, learn how to get it good and seasoned, and uh, especially the Dutch ovens and, and cast iron skillets. Uh, they're just awesome, and and you can just do if if you learn how to use those and and season them properly, you can go to camp and do just about anything at camp you can do in a house, but better. I mean, it's just there's something about something cooked out in the outdoors because you're gonna get that little bit of smoke's gonna curl around it. It's gonna get way more flavor, and uh, um, it's just gonna be awesome. So. Uh, Becky Dupree is chiming in here with a question. There's a Dutch oven group I would love to suggest uh, joining them. I started out going to Dutch oven gatherings, uh, de dogs, 20 years ago. Uh, at least at a dog, you won't go hungry if you screw up. <laughs> okay, okay, DOG, Dutch oven oven gatherings um that's probably that's really popular i know out in texas out west i don't know how much uh interest is in this area we may put it out there on facebook if we can get enough interest here in central florida you know uh, central florida is pretty much a tourist area not so much of a um you know an outdoor enthusiast area I'm probably, uh, you know, enigma around here. People don't really understand why I'm so damn backwoods uh, here in Central Florida. I, I moved to this area from North Florida where everybody was really backwards. And um, tell you one thing about Florida right now is we get to North Florida, that's pretty much the south. But the further south you go in Florida, the more up north you get i mean by the time you get down to fort lauderdale you're all the way back in new york city okay because everybody down there is damn new york city or new jersey or somewhere like that so they don't know nothing about down south florida about the outdoors now we did meet some, some people down southwest florida i mean there's a lot of transplants down there but there's still there's still a few good old boys that were born and raised down there that you know Grew up hunting, fishing, and going out in the Everglades and camping and stuff like that. So I'm not saying that's general, you know, that applies to everybody. But it's a it's a large um, percentage of people from Central Florida South um, are not from here and uh, are ba basically from the big city somewhere just trying to get away. So anyway, all right. So let's go back to the chat here real quick before we get to uh, any more. We got Galen Long asking a question here. And uh, Galen says, do you find using a higher quality charcoal, say B&B, &B, is a big help with the cast iron cooking? I do love B&B, &B, Galen. Um, it's a good, it's a really good lump charcoal. Sometimes I find that some of the chunks are actually too daggum big to use with the uh, Dutch oven um, because they won't go underneath. So sometimes you have to pick and choose the chunks in b, &B. It is really great for grilling and smoking in the Weber kettle grill, especially, especially doing hot and fast. Uh, um, but the b, &B you got to kind of pick through it and do Dutch oven cooking. I like it going camping where I can let it really burn down and, and get a, it, it's great for getting, uh, especially green wood. Sometimes we have green, you know, green firewood. You get that a little pile of that B and B going to your campfire first, get that green wood on. You got a lot of heat there and I'll get your green wood going and then you get a really good, good really good coal piles going there. Um, and B and B, uh, I like, a lot and uh coming up here this winter we're probably going to do a couple of um comparisons on a couple of different uh brands of lump charcoal 
and how they work with Dutch oven cooking and or grilling in a sportsman grill. So all right, y'all stay tuned for that. All right, so we're getting down to number four. So anybody got any um, guesses on what number four is uh, on my top ten um my top 10 tips. So if you got any tips on, or you got any guesses on what number four is, uh, put them in the chat right now. All right. So I wanted to remind you real quick again about the join button on our channel. You can hit that join button. You can join our channel just like Becky Dupree and, uh, and, and Sylvia, Mrs. Backwoods, um, uh, Several other John Daigle. We got a bunch of these guys uh, up here in chat that are already members. And uh, with that membership, you can get the membership for $1.99 a month. Okay, that's the entry level. Uh, and if you do get entry level, we got John Daigle. Yep, he's up in there too. You're going to get a special emoji uh, when you're in live chat and when you're in my comments. Uh, on my channel, you're going to show up prominently also so that if you have a question or comment, we'll be sure to get back to you because you're going to be a prominent um, commenter. Uh, buck 99 a month ain't a whole lot of spin. And also we have a bunch of different perks, uh, different uh, behind the scenes stuff. That you're going, if you're a member, you're going to get to see over on our community tab on the channel page. You'll get notified of those, and uh, you can see all that stuff right over there. Um, and we got other levels. Becky Dupree is a sous chef level member, so she gets a little bit more, a uh, little bit more access. So just check it out. Uh, if you like to be a member, we appreciate the support. It just helps us to buy the all the stuff that we need here to produce great videos for you guys, ingredients, and gear, and cameras and internet access and all all the expense that goes into producing this channel also I also would like to remind you that super chats enable on this particular chat if you'd like to help us out right now you can go down to the very bottom of your chat window you see a little uh, dollar sign you can uh, contribute as little as it or as much as you would like to help us out uh, in our cause here uh, to keep producing these videos. Like I said, I just went and spent like, I don't know, 60 bucks on a light tonight just to make this live stream more clear for you guys. Okay. And uh, luckily, my neighbor volunteered his time. He's an electrician and a co coworker of mine came over and helped me put it up. So, you know, it, it all, uh, Money makes the channel go around, as we say, and it helps us do travel, get out there, and, and produce great videos for you guys. All right. So James Smith is checking into the chat and uh, says, hi, we appreciate you, James. All right. So we're going to work on down the list here again. And now we're down to number three. We've been on here for 40 minutes. We talked about this on the last live chat in depth and it's uh number three is always have an alternate fuel source when you're camping or outdoor cooking you never know what the weather's going to be like or what the weather conditions are going to be like when you get out there um you know the worst thing in the world is you're going to get out there to camp uh 30 miles from town with your kids or whatever or you know your friends and uh, the minute you get to camp and you try to start a campfire, it's going to start pouring down rain. Or it's going to come enough rain that you just really can't start a campfire, do any kind of cooking on charcoal or whatever. So at that point, uh, you know, if you're out there, you're going to be eating cold sandwiches, all right? Unless you have alternate source of, of cooking. So... I would never go to the woods or camping without a camp stove, some propane, uh, the double burner propane stove like we have, or at least a camp grill, Coleman camp grill. 
uh, even a single burner, you know, one that screws on top of the bottle, uh, a sterno can, something. Uh, you're going to have something other than just charcoal and firewood. <coughs> All right, excuse me, guys. So always have an alternate heat source and a backup plan. Okay, a backup plan. So you're always going to be able to cook a great meal for you and your and your family or your guests. <coughs> excuse me again. <coughs> All right, so we got uh, Jerry Dale coming in chat there, and he says, hi from Missouri, appreciate you guys out there, was out there a few few years ago, stayed at uh, Table Rock Lake at uh, Big Cedar Lodge, had a great time out there fishing for, uh, you know, spotted bass and, uh, and large mouse, and uh, had a great time in the... Uh, in the uh in the mountains uh, mm. <sighs> been up since early uh man all right so becky dupree is uh giving a shout out there key west is in my bucket list uh yeah becky uh key west is awesome but i'll tell you all the keys on the way are probably even better even better than key west key west is uh the ultimate probably tourist town it's it's really beautiful down there we went a few times because just because uh, our nephew lived there and we had a free place to stay we got to go take the boat and uh, do some fishing ala Mirada, lower matacumbi upper matacumbi all those keys on the way down marathon all of them are really um awesome also and you know even if you don't always get all the way to key west or stay in key west key west is a nice place to visit i don't know if it's a nice place to actually stay uh some of the upper keys especially ala Mirada. if you're interested in fishing and seeing some of the calusa indian islands and stuff like that around there is they're they're i think even more awesome Okay, we got uh, Moana Thompson, uh, PA here, Seminole Fire in the Swamp Rocks. Absolutely, uh, that's uh, it's it's one of my faves. But all the Seminole Swamp seasonings are really good. The regular, the lowest, low low MSG or no no MSG. Uh, the fire swamp, uh, same. It's got a little bit of cayenne, a little bit of uh, a red pepper in it. It's really good. And uh, we're probably going to, uh, you know, hit that uh, join button down there. There's probably going to be uh, an opportunity for us to send some of that out to some of the members here very soon because they, uh, we appreciate. Uh, Thunder Bear over there at Seminole Swamp Season for helping us out with Lisa supplying the products. And he has been shipping those out directly to uh, commenters on the channel. And uh, that reminds me that the month is now November. So we got to pick a new, a new uh, dinner for a three pack, a free three pack of Seminole Swamp Season. It needs to go out, and uh, we appreciate Thunder Bear, uh, Jimmy Daniels, for sending that out. We were actually just down in um, southwest Florida shooting sport clays, and we went into a great place called the Cracker Shack. It's a good old country store. Uh, they have produce there. You have a little petting zoo, and they have a garden out back, a little produce stand. Great place. You're going to see it coming up on the channel pretty soon. And they actually carry the Seminole Swamp, Fire and Swamp, right there in their store. And uh, it, it's some super great, super great seasoning. And uh, we look forward to continuing our relationship with that company and, um, and keep using their products. And I actually took some down and gave it to our host 
on our trip that we just got back from uh, so we could take it back up to uh, to Michigan, use that up there. All right, so we're going down the list. We're getting to number two, okay? We're getting down the list now. Looking at 45 minutes into the chat, so number two. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys think and uh, about this particular one. Uh, number two is adapt to the weather, okay? And it is uh, that time of year when the weather's changing, all right? You guys up north, I know I just got a report back from a buddy, uh, my host. I was just staying with my my good old buddy, Marine Corps buddy, Rich Harden uh, from Ypsilanti, Michigan. They just got back to Michigan, and it was 29 degrees. Uh, here it's beautiful right now. It's like 70, okay? It's 29 degrees in Michigan after a five-hour flight from southwest Florida. So big, big temperature difference. Uh, depending on where you're at and he also said it was spitting snow so obviously you're going to have to depending on where you're at and what the weather is like you're going to have to adapt to that now not saying if it's 29 degrees and spitting snow you still can't cook outdoors you're just going to have to have some kind of shelter canopy something to keep that water snow off your grill you're obviously going to have to use a lot more heat in that kind of weather condition whether you're grilling, barbecuing, smoking, you got your, uh, it, you know, if you got your Traeger out there um, or Yoder pellet grill, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to do it for you. All right. But you still probably going to have to throw a wet blanket or, you know, wool blanket or something like that over top of it to keep your heat up, keep it all from sinking out of that thing. But, you know, you're always going to have to adapt to weather conditions and, uh, one of the big comments I get all the time is uh, on our on our channel, especially Dutch oven cooking, is like, "Hey, you didn't give us a cooking time." And uh, usually my response is, "Yeah, I didn't give you cooking time because it's going to depend. It's going to depend on, you know, we're cooking here maybe ninety degrees, but where you're cooking it may be fifty degrees. Uh, you may be using a different kind of charcoal. Um, so it's going to make a big difference depending on what your weather is." You, you could be, you might be 30 degrees outside and, you know, 10% humidity where we're cooking 90 degrees and it's 90% humidity. It's going to take way different cooking time depending on what conditions you're cooking it in. So basically, you just got to keep your eyeballs on what you're cooking. You know, you got to go in there every once in a while, test it, see how it's going. And, and whereas... Uh, you know, if it's 90 degrees outside and dry here, it may take 10 minutes to cook some. But if you're cooking it where you're at in Canada, you know, same time of year, you're in, you're in Canada or uh, uh, Missouri or North Dakota, and it's 40 degrees outside, it's going to take a lot longer to cook because that, you know, that cast iron is great, a big heat sink, okay? It's going to dissipate heat. Um especially if it's cold outside or it's windy, any of that. So it's going to take a lot longer depending on your cook time is, you know, 40 degrees if you're 90 degrees. So you got to adapt to the weather and you got to learn how to deal with it. And that's just, you're going to do that through learning and experience and just doing it. So if you guys up there in, uh, you know, cold climates, and you're trying to do, you know, Dutch oven cooking, throw that cold counting method. Yeah, you see on everybody, that's why I don't really do it that much here on our channel. Uh, just throw that cold counting method out the out the daggum window. You know, if it's 40 degrees outside, you're going to need twice as much charcoal on the, on the bottom, and you'll need twice as much charcoal on top. And you may even need to put it down a fire pit like we just did on uh, one of our uh, last videos out camp where it just could get it up to heat and had to put it down a fire pit. All right, so let's get back to the chat here and give a couple people a uh, uh, shout out. We got uh, John L. He says, hello from South Dakota. I help run a Boy Scout troop, and I pass on a lot of what I learned to on here to the guys, and we appreciate that. 
I actually learned and got interested in Dutch oven cooking in the scout program. Uh, I was, uh, uh, I went through the entire scouting program from Cub Scouts all the way to a life scout and uh, Boy Scouts as a youngster. And once I had kids, I also became a uh, leader in the Cub Scouts and in the Weeblos and um, went to a lot of training. Uh, I actually did um, a training session. Uh, when my youngest son was in Weeblo uh, and learned a lot from a very, very skillful and experienced Dutch oven cooker, scout cooker, um, who had like 10 Dutch ovens that uh, gave a lot of us adults a lot of info at that time. Uh, and I learned a lot from him. <coughs> And <clears throat> kind of refired, refired uh, stuff that I learned when I was in the Scouts. Uh, and I, ever since then, I've got a Dutch oven on my own. Start, got my first one, and started getting back into it, and just loved it ever since. And we did a lot of camping when our kids were kids. You know, our kids were young. Uh, they're all grown now. And, you know, grandbabies are coming, stuff like that. So, but uh, my passion for cooking Dutch oven cast iron has never gone away. But I've really learned a lot uh, over the years. So not really involved with scouting anymore since all my kids are grown. But I know you guys, there's a lot of you guys that are uh, a little younger, still involved in scouting. and. Uh, it's a great, great skill to pass down to your scouts. And I, I'm, I'm so glad that, that people passed it down to me when I was a scout. And that's been, you know, 35 years ago or, or longer. Okay. Because that Dutch of that thing lives forever and it uh, always will. All right, uh, let's get back to some of the chat before we get to number one on the list. And Darla A says, uh, I love cold weather camping and outdoor cooking. All right, well, uh, Darla A, I, 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 uh, I love it too because I feel like I'm a lot more uh, comfortable instead around a campfire when it's like 35 or 40 out that, you know, than it is when it's like 95, you know. So, yeah, I love it too. And tonight it's just beautiful out. Right now, I just dropped down to like, like maybe 65 degrees for the first time in months and months and months. So we're going to be doing more of it. So, okay, we got another um, person in the chat, Jay Ng Hun, Hunger Moon, uh, heart, heart, heart. Hi from South Korea. We appreciate you guys, uh, international people that that uh, come over and are interested in what we do. So we appreciate all everyone who comes over and watches our channel. We got a uh, chippers uh, family adventures chiming in here. Cook it all is done. Okay. Yeah. I think he's done. We used him for a boat anchor. Hey, daddy Dutch barbecues in the house. We appreciate you. Uh, it's the first time. Sorry. I've been yapping on. I haven't seen you over there uh, yet. That's Kent. Uh, we appreciate you over there. We uh, had a great time over there on uh, CJ's cooking, uh, CJ cooking with CJ's live here a while back. Uh, got another comment from Daddy Dutch. He says cooking the first batch of cast iron chili of the season, single digits in the next couple of days. Yeah, he's up there in Iowa, and um, yeah, I heard it's pretty chilly up there. Uh, so there's nothing better to make when it's cold outside than some good old chili. And uh, Daddy Dutch and the rest of you guys, um, yeah, go back in a uh, little ways and check out our white chili made with smoked turkey leftovers. Um, if you're trying to stay on a lower carb diet, uh, it was pretty uh, freaking awesome. All right, another shout out in the chat there to Food Forest per uh, Permaculture. He says, uh, hi to everyone. All right. Uh, we got 
Darla, hey, again, me the clinking beer mugs. Yeah, if you got, uh, if you're a uh, a member of the channel, which you can do that for the join button. Uh, you have custom emojis, and you got all kind of stuff you can you can uh, use custom emojis in this live chat. Okay, uh, another shout out. We got twenty three seventy one O J H, and no, he says, and no, he or she, I don't know which it is. He says, and no bugs when the temperatures drop. Uh, that's the greatest thing about camping in wintertime, especially here in Florida. Yeah, the bugs, they, they all go away and they don't bother you anymore. So uh, really, really awesome to camp in the winter here. And, you know, it gets cold at night so you can sleep and the bugs don't bother you. So we're going to be doing a, uh, hopefully a lot of that here in uh, this 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 uh, winter coming. And like I said, we hooked up with a couple other channels, Overland Florida, do a lot of uh, uh, pre uh you know, primitive type stuff where we go out in the woods, do some trail riding in the trucks and and then find a nice primitive site and uh, do some camping. Looking forward to doing that again. Uh, this year we tried to do a little bit in the spring when we just kind of uh, hooked up with those guys. But uh, definitely some more trips out to um, with Lacucci and uh, uh, the Green Swamp. Uh, maybe even over toward the coast and uh, maybe take the boat. You know, we're going to play it by ear, but it's probably going to be, you know, quite often here when the uh, weather cools down. Okay, so we're going on 57 minutes. We're going to be on here about an hour. So we've been waiting uh, for our number one tip, number one tip for outdoor cooking. And, um, you know, some of you guys might be surprised when I say what our number one tip is and the number one goal that we always try to reach when you're outdoor cooking is, is to have fun and enjoy the outdoors while you're doing it. Uh, that's, that's really the number one thing that keeps me doing outdoor cooking. If I'm on the back porch, it don't matter. I'm looking out over the backyard. I'm watching the skies, watching birds. or you know, out here doing it for you guys, or we're at camp, we're sitting beside a lake, wherever we're at, the number one thing that's the greatest thing about outdoor cooking is you're not cooped up inside. You're enjoying the weather, you're enjoying the bird singing, uh, whatever it is. If you're by the side of a lake, you're side of the side of a river, like we were up in up in Tennessee, you know, cooking on Dutch oven beside the Teleco River. That's the thing that's the most enjoyable about outdoor cooking is is you know you look out there, you got all the scenery. If you're cooking in a house behind the stove, what are you looking at? The backsplash, the back of the stove, the hood. When you cook it out in the outdoors, your backsplash is nature. And that's got to make you smile. Okay. It always does for me. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this little live chat. We're going to give a couple little uh, shout outs to some people that joined us a little late here. That's going to be um, Robert Highgate. He says plans. He said he plans on doing some outdoor cooking with our opener of deer season on the 15th. Love your channel. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, definitely deer camp, stuff like that, man. You can't beat sitting around a campfire cooking up whatever. All right. Um, Tipper's Family Adventures chiming in. He says, I like outdoor cooking in the summer because it doesn't heat up the house. As I, I'm gonna agree with you there. And a lot of times we do it out here on a uh, double burn propane stove in in, a, in the uh, summer. Even though we got central air, but you know, I just love coming out here and doing it outside because it's stuff like you know, fry up some fish, something like that, don't stink up the house. Another great, great reason. All right, and uh, he's also 
putting in a secondary comment, which you tagged me on there, it says everything tastes better cooked outdoors. And I'm going to probably make that a preface to the number one, the number one reason to do outdoor cooking is because he's absolutely right that for some reason and I that I cannot explain is somehow everything you cook outside, especially on campfire uh, or charcoal uh, or even on propane or on your your camp stove somehow tastes better when it's cooked outdoors. All right. Well, uh, keep on going here with a few of the comments and uh, food forest permaculture says, uh, yeah, I cook on the side of the ocean. And it's awesome. Uh, absolutely. Um, okay, we've got uh, somebody new in the chat here. JD Dowdy, love your channel. Appreciate you showing up there, JD. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you check out our join button and the uh, options that you have down there. And uh, remember that super chat is uh, enabled. You can hit that little dollar sign to help us out. So, all right, guys, it was a. Uh, it was super, super, uh, you know, enjoyable hanging out with everyone. So, you know, I'm trying to edit the videos for uh, coming weeks. I know we didn't have a video yesterday. Uh, we were still down in South Florida uh, trying to film stuff. We filmed a bunch of stuff down in Southwest Florida. And uh, that's all going to be coming up on the channel pretty soon. And uh, we brought, we did catch some fish and uh, some stone crabs. So we're going to be cooking up some of that stuff here uh, since we got back to the house. But, you know, I was on vacation. I try to take a vacation from YouTube also. Not that I took a vacation from filming, but I did take a vacation from editing videos and all that. We really didn't have time. We were really busy. Uh, you know, it's just enjoying a place and enjoying a company and cooking you know we cooked every night at the at the place where we were at um you know uh our host uh, my good buddy uh rich and his wife they they rented a house you know right on the water and we had a full kitchen and grills and all that and we we never ate uh we me and mrs backwoods were there for a week and we never ate out one time we cooked everything at home, on the grill, uh, whatever. Uh, didn't film a lot of that, uh, but we did film quite a bit uh, of our adventures. So the last thing I want to really tell you guys is um, that um, we we actually started a new channel. We started a new channel for our adventures because... Uh, it seems like every time we put stuff up that's just uh, about what we're doing on a day-to-day basis, when we put it up on our channel, YouTube just it just kills it. It kills our numbers because only a few of you guys watch, and it just screws with all the the numbers of YouTube. And it just you know every time we try to do it, um, the views really go down on the channel because our ranking our ranking with YouTube just just gets blown out of the water. So what we're going, what we did to just today or a couple, you know, yesterday, I think it was today actually, we started a new YouTube channel, and our new YouTube channel is called Backwoods Gourmet Adventures. All right, so if you want to see what we're doing uh, in between cooking videos, our adventures of going to, like our vacation here today, and and there are going to be more and more adventures. Us uh, hunting and stuff like that for this fall. So it doesn't really seem to, you know, be going over very well on the channel. We started uh, on the Backwoods Gourmet channel. We started a new channel, Backwoods Gourmet Adventures. I'm going to render this out, but you can go ahead and go over there. Maybe uh, one of my moderators can search that right now Backwoods Gourmet Adventures, find that channel post a link up there for you guys to, to um, go over there and subscribe. Okay. go. It's a brand new channel. Go over there and subscribe to that. 
So you'll be able to see our adventures that, you know, may not have a lot of cooking in it, but it's going to have all the stuff that we don't show you. Or maybe little blurbs of, um, you know, of them in our cooking, our cooking video. But if you want to see more of the details of, you know, how we went there, how to get there, uh, information about where to get there and all the other things that we may have seen on the way that just didn't make it into the videos on the Backwoods Gourmet channel, you're going to go to Backwoods Gourmet Adventures. All right. When this, uh, if you're watching this after the live stream and after it's rented out, that will be right down in the description box. So any of you guys are watching right now, you just come back to this video in a couple of days after it's rendered out. I'll have the link to Backwoods Gourmet Adventures right down in the description. All right. So we appreciate it. And uh, we got a Polk Sporting Clays showing up here. My good old buddy, uh, probably that's Dave Coggle showing up there. I'm uh, happy you got a vacation. <laughs> yeah. Finally, uh, about once a year, we get about a week. Okay. So, uh, and actually, if uh, you guys are in the central Florida area anywhere, I know a bunch of you are, and you like to shoot uh, clay clay targets, go over there, uh, hit uh, Polk Sporting Clays. You see him over there in the chat. Just click on his, uh, his name. Go over there and subscribe on that channel. I'm also the uh, producer of that channel, uh, or co-producer of the... Uh, Polk Sporting Clays channel. So I produce a lot of content over there on their channel. So we appreciate that. And um, everybody that, that goes over there and watch that, if you're interested in Sporting Clays, we did uh, some great, some great, great charity events over there. You might be interested in seeing what's going on over there. And, uh, and they're, they've been a great support. So Polk Sporting Clays, uh, local, local, business pretty great all right so big shout out to them all right so everybody uh let's uh, see becky dupree is chiming in here in a lone star dutch oven society we emphasize the three fps food fun and fellowship our uh, three three f's i guess you was trying to say food fun and fellowship yep um, I would love to come over to Texas and, and, um, participate in one of those. And, it, and if we could ever get this channel to the point where we could actually make a living on it, um, it's nowhere near that yet. Uh, we'd love to come over to Texas. You know, that's, that's a, a day and, a, you know, day and a half trip for us to come over there. But, um, we may, uh, like I said, put our feelers around here, see if uh, there's any interest. But, you know, I doubt if there's enough in this area, maybe North Florida, Northwest, Northwest Florida. But uh, we'll put it out there on Facebook. Uh, and Becky, I, I think you're over there on our Facebook page. If you're not, uh, go over there. I think you're on the um, Facebook uh, group. So if not. Make sure you hit us up over there. Maybe we can try to do something. Greasy Grits just showed up. Um, another member. Appreciate you showing up. I just, uh, you may have been here earlier. I didn't uh, notice you. <clears throat> we appreciate Greasy, Greasy Grits. So uh, we also got John L. Um, he's talking to Daddy Dutch over there in Sioux Falls. He's from Sioux Falls on the Big, Big Sioux. You know, and I hate to, I hate to go off, guys, because everybody knows he's in here from deep south Texas. Appreciate you guys, but uh, I got stuff to do. Um, you know, try to get some videos going here. So if uh, you got any more comments, remember that you know, a day or two, this is going to be rendered out. It's going to be a regular video on our channel, and you can go down, leave com more comments below. I'll read all those comments and be able to respond to them. So appreciate you guys showing up and um, don't forget on my list, number one, have fun, enjoy the outdoors.
We'll see you next time.